Hey guys, it's Tamika and I'm your healthy hair coach. I'm a hairstylist that specializes in helping women grow their hair, not just to black girl long, but to long, strong, healthy, and vibrant hair. In this video, I will be showing you how I flat iron natural hair to get smooth, silky salon results. So anybody out there who's watching this video and hasn't already subscribed, go on ahead and smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. That way you can stay updated on all of my hair care videos, my vlogs and everything in between. I have lots of cool stuff going on here on this channel. But in today's video, I'm demonstrating on how to get a smooth silky flat iron finish. So I guess we should just go on ahead and get started with the demo. I hope you guys enjoy. So I'm going to start off with a fresh clean head of hair and I'm going to first of all um, wet the hair really really well with warm water. And then I'm just going to do a thorough shampoo and I'm using the Joyco Moisture Recovery Shampoo here. And if the hair has a lot of buildup, it's best to go on ahead and start with a clarifying shampoo first and then follow up with a moisturizing shampoo. So I'm just rinsing out all of the shampoo. And I'm going to repeat the process. I always shampoo the hair until I feel like it's clean and really clean. And sometimes it may be one, two, three, or even four times depending on how much product buildup is um, previously on the hair. Because if you don't shampoo all the product out of the hair, you won't get the smooth, silky salon results that you want. So get the hair as clean as possible. And just make sure you rinse all of the shampoo out. And those are just some tips and I'm gonna be giving tips along the way. So I'm just squeezing out the excess water and I'm preparing to condition the hair and I'm using the Matrix So Long Conditioner on the hair. And this is a great conditioner if you want to um, flat iron the hair. I love it, it's one of my favorites, it's one of my top fives. And I use plenty of conditioner because Conditioning is one of the most important steps in getting a smooth, silky flat iron finish. So I'm just distributing that all throughout the hair really, really well. And now I'm just going to uh, sit her underneath the dryer for about 15 minutes. Now it's time to rinse the conditioner out. Make sure you thoroughly rinse the conditioner because you don't want any type of conditioner residue on the hair. And I usually rinse with warm water first and then I go in and rinse with um, cooler water for the final rinse. And the cooler water helps seal the cuticles and it helps um, get that shine that you want when you're flat ironing the hair. So I'm just gonna wring that out, all the um, excess water. Okay, so for the heat protection, I'm gonna be using a Qi um, Keratin Infusion Serum and it's really, really good and it's lightweight and it's great for fine hair. If you have thicker hair, you can use something like Paul Mitchell Super Skinny or a thicker serum. And you just need like a dime size amount for each section. And I'm, I'm doing four sections this time around, but you can do more if your hair is thicker. And so I'm just emulsif emulsifying that in my hands. I'm going to distribute that evenly throughout each section. So at the roots, in the middle and at the ends, I'm distributing the um, heat protectant. And this is a very important step. And you always put the heat protectant on before you fly, before you blow dry because the hair needs to be protected during the blow dry as well. And I'm going to use a wide tooth comb and I'm going to, from the ends of the hair on up to the roots, distribute that product evenly all throughout the hair. And in case anybody's curious about uh, the hair types I'm working with hair, this is 3C4A hair. And so I'm just gonna go section by section and apply about a dime, size, a dime size amount to each section and then clip it up out of the way. And I like to go on ahead and apply the heat protecting to the entirety of the head of hair before I start blow drying. And here I'm demonstrating how I do it again. Just like a dime size amount or less depending on, you kind of have to gauge it depending on the thickness and length of the hair. And of course, because the hair here is longer, I'm gonna use a little bit more so a dime size amount is great for her texture for her length for her thickness 
and just distributing that all the way through all of the hair on the roots on the mid shaft on the ends and I'm going to comb that through So I'm going to repeat that same process of applying the heat protectant to all of the sections. I'm going to repeat that on this section and the other section because I have four sections total. Distributing it evenly throughout the hair, throughout the roots of the hair, throughout the mid shaft and onto the ends of the hair. And then I'll take the wide tooth comb and comb it through. So now it's time to blow dry. So I'm going to start from the ends of the hair and work my way up slowly to the mid shaft and then to the roots of the hair. And it's, it's best to go on ahead and blow dry slow and work your way up instead of trying to blow dry fast and then just kind of ripping through the hair. So you gotta be gentle to the hair to make sure that it stays in great shape. And I'm blow drying on medium high and I'm using the Willie Morrow comb attachment and also the Rusk Speed Freak blow dryer that's my favorite blow dryer because it's lightweight and it's powerful and it has lots of settings um, you know depending on the hair type you want to adjust the settings because some people need higher heat some people need lower heat and so I just slowly work my way up the shaft until it gets dry section by section a little bit at a time working my way up the shaft until I feel like the hair is dry and a blow dry can take anywhere from, depending on the length and thickness of, of a person's head, head of hair, it can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, or it can take up to an hour, depending on it, so many factors. And I, I do have clients whose blow dries do take about an hour. But I just like to take my time, not ripping through the hair. I like to take my time and go slowly through the hair and make sure that I'm being gentle to the hair. And so it looks like in this particular uh, section that it seemed like it was too big, so I decided to part it in two. And I'll, I'll do that a lot. I'll start off with a section and then I'll feel like it, I have too much going on with it, so I'll part it into another section and it just makes it easier to blow dry. And one thing I like to tell people is that the key to a fantastic smooth flat iron finish is a smooth blow dry. So you've gotta get all the knots and kinks out of the hair when you blow dry before you flat iron. And that's the trick. Now I'm just going to keep blow drying the section until I feel like it's smooth enough and dry enough. And I'm going to repeat that same step for every section I do, starting at the ends of the hair and then working my way through the mid shaft and then working my way to the roots of the hair. Slowly, slowly, slowly is key. Slow to make sure that it's smooth. Slow to make sure that you get all the knots and kinks out. And the hair was previously, previously detangled so it makes it a lot easier to blow dry. But I guess I should have showed that step but I did not.
So now I'm working with the next section. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to blow dry starting from the ends of the hair. And then working my way up a little bit at a time, going slow, making sure I'm gentle with the hair. And if you're ever blow drying and you run into any knots or tangles, stop and detangle the hair first and then go back and start blow drying again. You have to be gentle to the hair to make sure it stays healthy and intact with the least amount of breakage as possible. So I'm just going to keep blow drying section by section and doing the same thing starting from the ends of the hair, working through the mid shaft and then going up to the roots of the hair. Blow drying slowly. Slow and smooth is key. When the smoother the hair is, when you when you finish blow drying, the smoother the flat iron will be. And then you won't have to use as much heat when you flat iron either. So now I'm blow drying the last section of hair and I'm parting that in sections to make it smaller to make it easier to blow dry making sure the blow dry is smooth and as I said before I'm using medium high heat and I do have some people out there when I do their hair that they require higher heat I just try to um, make sure I gauge it depending on hair type. And a lot of times I'll find myself uh, starting with a certain like four sections and then winding up with six to eight sections depending on the length and thickness of hair. And so now that I have finished flat ironing, I'm just combing through the hair and um, during the course of me combing through the hair, I'm trying to get out any knots or kinks that I might feel. And also I like to give the hair a minute to rest so I can see if there's any spots that I may have missed. Um, during a blow dry because it's nothing like having wet hair and you're trying to flat iron wet hair. So the hair has to be 100% dry before you proceed to flat ironing. So you see me there checking and letting the hair rest and cool down, checking for spots to make sure that um, 
everything is uh, dry. But usually on a, a hair like this, you're gonna find spots right at the roots, especially in the back of the head that aren't dry. So I'm just gonna go over those spots again with the blow dryer on medium high heat. And so what I'll do is I'll part the hair in the direction that I want it to go. And then I'm just going to take the blow dryer through the hair um, one more session to make sure that the hair is completely dry and completely smooth the way I need it to be. And this saves a person from um, getting singed at the scalp. That is not a good feeling at all. Just trying to make uh, my customers as comfortable as possible. And usually after I've done this last pass with the blow dryer, then everything is good to go. Just making sure to get that spot that's in the middle that always seems to um, stay wet. Just take your time with the blow dry. It'll make the flat iron go a lot easier. Trust me. So the flat iron, I'm going to be using the FHI platform. And this is a one inch flat iron and it goes up to 450 degrees. Generally, I don't use 450 degrees on people's hair. I do from time to time I have some people that require higher heat, but most times I'm using anywhere from 375 to 410 degrees. And I believe that I use 410 degrees in this flat iron. Um, one thing I can say is that the higher the heat, the more smooth the results you're gonna get. And so when I flat iron, I generally only make one pass, sometimes two, depending on the length and thickness of hair. So I've parted the hair down the middle and I've clipped um, one side away and now I'm just going to start on one side and the reason why I parted down the middle is because I'm going to be going in a vertical uh, direction and this just helps me um, get to the roots really really well because the head is curved so I'll do vertical sections all the way around the back area and I'm taking probably about an eighth of an inch section And I'm just going to grab that with my, actually, I'm gonna grab that with my fingers and I actually split that section apart because it was a little bit too too big. But putting a little tension on the flat iron, I'm going slowly down the shaft. One pass. Then I'm gonna take the other section and then I'm going to put a little tension at the root and then I'm gonna slide that flat iron down the shaft slowly. And the steam that you see is you, the um, flat iron um, being passed through with the product on there. But you see it's really nice and smooth. So whatever product on, your, on there creates the steam that you see. It's not actually burning the hair. If the hair is burnt, you'll smell it. And that's not cool. And you see that I'm getting it smooth with one pass on 410 degrees. So I'm creating a little bit of tension again with my fingers. And then I'm going to tap that root a couple of times and I'm going to slide the flat iron down the shaft using the comb chase method. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It really just depends. Um, the comb chase method is really good if you have hair that's a little bit kinkier or resistant. And sometimes I don't have to use it if the hair is easy to flat iron. So I'm um, putting that tension there onto the roots to get them straight and smooth. And then the comb chase method on down the shaft slow. It's better to, to make slow motions down the shaft instead of going fast and having to keep repeating. And you see how silky smooth that is? Okay, here's a close-up of what I'm doing. I'm taking a vertical section. And now I'm going to take that section in half. This is too big. You need small sections and that's about an eighth of an inch. I'm creating tension at the root with my fingers. I'm going to tug just a little bit there to create that tension. And then I'm going to tap the root a couple of times. And then down the shaft, slow and steady, one smooth motion using the comb chase method. And the steam you see is the product. I'm going to do it again. Creating tension at the root with my fingers. I'm tugging just a little bit to straighten it out. And then I'm going to tap those roots a couple of times. And then I'm going to go down the shaft, slow and steady, using the comb chase method, all the way down. 
and it's nice and smooth. Another section. It's about an eighth of an inch, guys. The smaller the section, the better results you'll get. The smaller the section, the smoother the hair you'll get. Creating tension at the root, tapping a couple of times, and going down the shaft. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to show you this a few times so you can get the gist of what I'm talking about. It's very, very simple. You just have to be patient and take your time taking small sections. As you can see, I keep taking small sections about an eighth of an inch. The smaller the section you take, the smoother the hair will be. And an eighth of an inch is about as small as you should take it. But if you go bigger, then the hair won't come out as smooth and it won't stay straight and smooth as, as long. Because the hair should stay straight and smooth until it's wet again. Now, it will start puffing up at the roots just a little bit because that's just part of being natural. But the rest of the hair should stay pretty straight in between shampoos. So as you can see, we have silky smooth results. Silky smooth results just by taking our time. And so I'm going to repeat the same process going around the head up until I get to right around the top of the ear. And then I'll show you what I do from there. So as you can see, the hair is silky smooth and it has lots of shine, it has lots of weight and it's easy to comb through. And the thing, whatever I did on that set side of the head, I'm going to turn around and do it on the other side of, head, of the head. I'm going to be taking vertical sections and creating the tension at the root with my fingers taking a flat iron on 410 degrees, tapping at the root, and then going down the shaft slowly, the shaft of the hair slowly with the comb chase method. And so now I'm going to take the flat iron in the direction that I want the front of the hair to lie. So if I want, if I want the hair to lie going forward, then I make forward sections and flat iron forward. If I want it going back, then I flat iron, I make sections going back and then flat iron backwards. But we want the hair going forward, so we're going forward with the flat iron. And it's the same method on this side as well. So I'm going to cre create some tension with my fingers. Mm -hmm. You see that? tension and then I'm going to tap the roots and then go down the shaft 
with the flat iron slowly. And I'm going to continue to do that all the way around the head. So let me show you, so you show you a close up on the other side. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> let me show you a close up on the other side. So I'm parting the section and the direction that I want the hair to lie. And I'm just putting some tension there and then tapping the roots a couple of times and down the shaft slowly. And the steam you see there is not because the hair is wet or because the flat iron is too hot, it's from the product. And I'm going to keep uh, taking sections in the way in the direction I want the hair to lie. The finished style. Tapping a couple times the root and chasing the flat iron down the shaft slowly. I cannot stress that enough. It's better to go slow and steady than to go fast and have to make two, three, four, or five passes. It takes patience to get a smooth flat iron and still um, maintain the integrity of the hair. There we go again, tension. Tapping the roots, going down the shaft slowly using the comb chase method. And I'm just gonna re keep repeating that until I get to the top. So now that I'm at the top of the head, I'm going to part, part the hair in the direction that I want the hair to lie. So if I want the hair to lie forward, then I part forward. If I want it to lie sideways, I part sideways. If I want it to lie back, then I part back. And then I also flat iron in that same direction of the part. The same method for the front, creating, creating the tension with my fingers at the roots and then tapping and going down the shaft with the comb chase method. And it's very simple. The key to a great flat iron is clean hair that's been well conditioned, smooth, blow dried hair, completely smooth, completely blow dried hair. It has to be 100% dry. And then flat ironing smooth and intentional and slow. And if you take your time and if you have plenty of patience, you will get awesome, amazing salon results each and every time you flat iron. And she has lots of shine and body in her hair and it just looks really really good Now I didn't show it here in this particular video, but a lot of times if I have clients that have finer edges or if their edges a little bit shorter than the rest of the hair, I'll use a one eighth, I think it's a one eighth or a one quarter inch flat iron to uh, press out the edges. That way um, <laughs> I can save them from getting burnt or anything like that. And 
I, I may have done it here and just didn't show it in the video, but normally I use a smaller flat iron for the edges. So here we have a silky smooth flat iron finish and her hair looks really, really amazing. And as I said, again, if anybody's interested, she, she is a fine 4A. So guys, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, suggestions for other videos that you want to see, suggestions for other tutorials that you would like to see, product reviews, anything like that, feel free to leave a comment below. I would love to help as many people as possible. And I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a wonderful, amazing, blessed day. God bless you. And I will talk to you in the next video. I love you. Bye.